be awesome. We live on Facebook and it's somebody is let me read Ifoma Malik from Abuja. Ifoma would appreciate if you can rename yourself. Let me just play the profile. Of our keynote speakers. Then um, I'm having problems with the volume, but I'll just play the video. Please let's try and read fast. Because of time, I can't start. But I'll try and um, read along just to help. Okay. So this is UK on the 30 CEO, CEO at Good Nomad. UK is someone that is always a pleasure to hear him speak. His thinking pattern is focuses goals is just amazing. UK is an innovator in the tech industry. In the tech industry, serves as the visionary of CEO of Go Nomad, a leading software platform enabling global commerce for businesses, powering them with tools to sell and transact internationally. UK is an exceptional performer with diverse talents and a burning passion for entrepreneurial solutions. Since his early days in the university, he has dedicated his ideas to deconstructing business models to achieve skill from any part of the world. I love that. At 21, UK founded Go Nomad with a mission to enable African businesses sell and deliver their products and services internationally with ease. Under his leadership, Go Nomad has swarmed with unprecedented to unprecedented by securing partnership with industries giants and significantly boosting international trade for African businesses. UK's commitment to innovation is evident in Go Nomad's intuitive products, I mean over 300 plus merchants with global commerce tools, and in turn collectively driving millions of dollars in international sales value. Amazing. He is known for his resolve and extraordinary foresight for birthing novel visions and navigating entrepreneurial challenges, driving growth and profitability while at it. His harmonious blend of empathy and operational efficiency fosters a vibrant organizational culture that is manifest in fluid and excellent output. UK's influence extends beyond this company as is a sought after thought leader and speaker in the fields of business, marketing, personal leadership, and entrepreneurship. Inspiring and training over 20,000 individuals across high profile conferences, submit and knowledge sharing platforms. He is lauded and recognized as a beacon of hope for the next generation of entrepreneurs and leaders in technology and business. As a visionary and innovator, UK Energenio continues to define the future of business and technology, leaving an indelible mark on the industry and establishing his legacy as a trailblazer in the digital age. Ladies and gentlemen, with resounding digital car, please can we welcome on this podium UK Edu Junior. I hope I'm pronouncing your name well and absolutely. I'm not <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank so, you so much, ma'am. It's a pleasure la... to be here again. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for honoring our invitation. Absolutely. Now, let me introduce my brother. Like this one is a association by force. Every time I say my brother, I'm like, ah, what he have I to do? What he blow. See your brother. So now let me this is his profile. Hmm. Touch. No be do the no be do champion with two kids, two decades of seasoned expertise in investments, 
Banking and Transaction Advisory, Mayawa Olusoji stands as a distinguished professional in the financial sector. His proficiency lies in distilling intricate financial data into understandable insight, a skill that has earned him recognition as a master in data interpretation and analysis. As a finance mentor, he imparts wisdom as smart steward as a global academy director, shaping the mind of aspiring financiers. Mayawa's academic journey led him to the prestigious Leeds Business School in the UK, where he his MBA, further cementing his authority in the field. His entrepreneurial spirit is evident through his ventures, including founding the Power to Know, a platform dedicated to empowering individuals with knowledge. And his role as the No Be Do champion, where he advocates for actionable knowledge and dynamic doing. Beyond his professional pursuits, Mayawa is passionate, is a passionate project consultant, offering his vast experience to get projects to fruition. His love for knowledge extends to his personal life as an avid reader, constantly seeking new information and perspectives. As a life coach, he dedicates himself to helping others achieve personal growth and success, embodying his belief in the transformative power of knowledge and action. You can connect with him on his social media and ladies and gentlemen with resounding virtual clap. Hey, hey, please can you welcome my very own brother, Mayowa Ulusoji. Brother Thank, you. Thank you very much, ma'am. If you can hear me, it's nice to be here and nice to, meet, to see you, Mr. OK. And, um, and you can be sure I'm definitely going to be connecting with you at the back of this, this meeting as well. So it's good to be here again. Okay. Nice to meet you, everyone. Thank you very much, man. Okay, so thank it's you. Let's, pleasure to be, meet you as well. Yes, sir. Let's jump to the McCoy of the matter. And this is going to be a conversation I have. So let me allow the other panelists, the panelists introduce themselves, then we jump in. So can we have you, Dida? Dida, please, can you just introduce yourself? I'll meet your mic, introduce yourself, please. Hello, Dida. Okay, let's have Bumi. If Dida is still... Okay, hi, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bumi Okeshola. It's so good to be on this platform again. Thank you coach uh, so good to have you mr uh, coach mo so good to have you uk once again um thank you everyone looking forward to our conversation tonight awesome thank you kika can we have you introduce yourself all right good evening everybody um my name is kika kupola i've been working virtually for three years almost three years now it's a pleasure to be here and to learn from everybody. Thank you. Emmanuel, can we have you? Okay, let me go since Emmanuel is um, still funny like I did initially. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. <laughs> My name is Dan Lola, but I enjoy to be called Gida. Um, I should say I started as a, a telecommunication analyst, but right now I've dived back and I'm right now doing um, HR, which is very, very interesting. So, and this happened, um, I actualized this thing, doing this global and virtual training online, and I've been doing this for about three years right now, so I'm happy to be here. Okay, thank you. Okay. Emmanuel, are you ready okay. for us now? Okay, yeah. Good evening, everyone. I was actually trying to unmute, though. Uh, sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, my name is um, Kuba Emmanuel, but I prefer being called Dibre. Um, Everyone should know that um, by now. Okay, I'm a graphic designer, and um, I'm a web developer as well. And then I'm very, very much happy to be here. 
And I'm much more ready to learn from this um, than I'm more ready to even say anything. <laughs> thank you, Coach. Thank you, um, Coach Mo. Thank you, UK. It's a great one to be on the same call with you. And um, it's a real privilege. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. So thank you very much, everyone. As I said, this evening is going to be very educative. It's going to change the trajectory of some of us lives because if we continue doing the things that we were doing, then we'll get the results that we've been getting. Now, before I bring on my speakers, the panelists, and we start asking the questions, I want us to interact in the chat room. Have you heard the phrase, the good old days before? The good old days, the good old days. If you've heard the phrase, the good old days, say yes. Can I see the yes or the no's? Have you heard that phrase before? Good old days. <laughs> sure, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> it says yes, so. Yes, so. Okay. So if you agree, so you've had the phrase, the good old days before everybody says, at least all the comments in the chat room says yes. So if you agree, that it was truly good old days. Can I have one, one, one in the chat room? That was good old days. It was truly the good old days. One, one, one in the chat room. And if you think that the old days were not so good, you can put zero. So, no, it doesn't depend. <laughs> is, is it? Okay. Okay, Amido, who says one? <laughs> Neta says zero. If I zero is big, Chidima says one, okay? <laughs> My Awa says it depends. <laughs> he says it's 0 0.5. <laughs> I don't understand all these mathematicians in the house. We said zero or one. Okay, so the conversation is um starting now. Chidima, please, do you mind unmuting your mic to tell us why? And please, let's keep the conversation going. The question is good old days. So if you think that it was good old days, it's a one. If you think it was not good old days, it's a zero. And we want to take perspectives as we dive. Remember, we are talking about remote work, how to earn in USD. And I'm intentionally starting this conversation this way because... I've seen a lot of things on social media. I'm sure by the time I go to social media now, I'll see a lot of, hey, what is happening? Good old days. What is happening? Yesterday was better than today. The day before yesterday is better than today. Okay, my wife is changing his mind. He said good old days is a scam, Joe. <laughs> okay, so Chidima, please, can you unmute your mic and yeah. tell us about the good old days? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, for, for me, I would I would say that you know back then things were a bit um better in terms of the economy, and we did not have all of this um sporadical inflation that is ongoing now. You know, I I used to hear of a time where the dollar was one um one naira to one dollar. But now the difference is so, the margin is so wide that, you know, a lot of things are just skyrocketing. And then the, you know, even in education before, before now, you know, once you're a graduate, um, you get the best jobs, you have a lot of, you know, opportunities. Now being a graduate is just like, you know, what and all. And then everybody now has a master's, everybody now has a PhD, and then everybody is just fighting survival of the fittest. So I would say that, it was easier in a, like our parents' time because things were a bit more easy. Once you are like serious, you will make headway. But now, even if you are serious, you have to have a lot of connection. You have to have a lot of this and that, you know. So, so I would say that in a way, um, you know, it was easier for the majority of people to make it before. Now it's like a very big struggle. Corruption has increased. A lot of things have gone haywire. You know, merit is not longer a thing of you know of pride. Now you have to know somebody, you have to know somebody to do something to get this done and all. But before now, it wasn't this bad. That's why um, it's my opinion that the olden days was better. 
Loving this, loving this, loving this. And without wanting to put you, and we'll be deconstructing this. We'll, we'll really be deconstructing this. And for me, this night is going to be a deliverance service. So I hear you. There was it. In fact, let me help you. There was a time that the Naira was stronger than the pounds, not just the dollar. The Naira was actually stronger than the pounds. Am I correct, um, Mayowa? Yeah, so Mayowa is nodding. Now, the question, Ma, is, yeah, the question, Ma, uh, permit me, and uh, please, not just to ch um, Chidima, everybody here, in this period, when the pound was stronger than the dollar, how many millionaires did your family produce? in those opportunities. So please, people that your family produced one millionaire, drop one. If your family produced two millionaires, drop two. <laughs> Let us say no, no. If your prime family produced 10 millionaires in those opportunities, please drop 10 because we should have children of billionaires here from the good old days. <laughs> UK is laughing. <laughs> no, UK, I'm suspecting you. All these things that you are dropping. I'm suspecting your grandfather that dropped the money. He must he must have leveraged on those good old days when there was money. <laughs> Somebody said, she, she, we know see. We're all millionaires though in our dreams. Okay, so I start and we are getting to the McCoy of the matter now. And I, I intentionally brought this up because... I'm seeing more of emotions than, and it's fine. We're all emotional beings. That's why we are here. And that's why we're all given to learning. Everybody, including myself, is here on this platform to have a mind shift. I agree. You know, I said my wife is my brother. So you see us agreeing a lot. I agree with my wife 100%. The good old days is this camp. There's nothing like good old days. There's nothing like good times. There's nothing like bad times. What you have is simply time. You are the one that we put the label on it that would determine if it is good or it is bad. And that's why I intentionally started the trajectory this way because I hear all of this on when we were giants, when we were big, when we were strong, when this was this, so good. In all of this time, our fathers, our uncles, as you rightly said, when graduates were being loaded, when jobs were waiting for you as a graduate and a brand new car, a tier nylon, what did men do with those opportunities? We are those men today. And so that the next generation will not look at the opportunity because we understand life backwards. The next generation we not look at the opportunities that we have today that we are not seeing. And they will, they will be saying, ah, you see in the good old days, eh? those days where chat GPT just came out. Ah, those days where remote, um, remote work came out. Ah, if I had been born then, what I would have done. I don't know what mommy and daddy were doing with those opportunities. I, was, I had the privilege of being on the platform last year. And right now I'm trying to be very careful when I talk, because as at that time, Naira to dollar was, I think, 700, 600, and people were screaming on the rooftop, and I honestly did not understand the scream. And the question I asked, and I'm afraid, I don't want to talk too much now, so that they will say someone is a prophet of doom, but you need to be asking yourself reality checks. And now, I see people are shouting, it is 700 to one dollar now. What will you do if it becomes five thousand to one dollar? What will you do? You will jump in like a dolik. What will you do? And everybody is looking. And at some point last week, it touched one thousand nine. And I can assure you that I'm not the one talking. I'm moderating. I'm just creating a platform, a mind shift that in every crisis there is opportunity. The bigger the crisis, mark my words, the bigger the opportunities. And that is what we are here to do this evening, to look at the opportunities that abound in this our time. I'm rounding up now and handing over to the panelists. I'm asking questions and I'm, I'll be asking questions and they will be asked free. I shared on the read in-house platform and please feel free to check 
it's Google search skills for the future. Part of the skills for the future is complex problem solving. So if complex problem solving is part of the skills for the future, then it's a no brainer that you are going to face complex problem. Your ability to solve this complex problem is what is going to translate to money. Now we are in, and please, this is very interactive as we're going on. If you have any questions, just drop the questions in the chat room or raise your hands and we would definitely ask you. So the first question will be going to Mayowa first, then UK. So, okay, um, I see Temi Tokwe saying, COVID brought about shifts in the way we work. Excellent, very true Temi Tokwe. So imagine the changes that will come in the next five, 10 years, but let me leave it to the experts to talk. So the first question is, what do you think about the future of remote work in the next five to 10 years? First, Mayawa, then you can have your perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nam. It's good to be here, everyone. Ah, you asked what I call the million dollar question. The first approach I'm going to take to this there is, what is the future of work itself? Before we now start dissecting if it is remote, if it is virtual, if it is virtual, if it is behind the corner, whatever it is. One thing I can tell you all without a shadow of a doubt, which I can guarantee almost 99%, what we call work right now, it's not going to be the same thing we call work in the next five to 10 years. You can take that, it's guaranteed. So... That's the first thing. Now, it is now about for us to now see, okay, if we can take a go into the future of work, we can then be able to know what is the role of work, of remote working. And I'm going to tell you that most of the roles that have been done remotely will almost 85% be replaced by automations, human droids, technology. I can tell you that. And the reason is not just because it's not something that is not currently here, it's something which the, the pace at which it was moving is what is going to change a lot of things. And yes, what two days ago on Friday, the whole of the world was on standstill. They were waiting for company to what to give us their Q4 earnings. And I'm telling you, the whole of Wall Street was like, wait till yeah, NVIDIA, tell us what you have earned though. Tell us what you have ended. Why? And it's because NVIDIA is the one that is changing the future of work. And that is AI, what I call the ABCD of exponential age. So like it or not, the future of work is completely different. Nine out of 10 things we're currently doing right now would not be there for us to do anymore. We would to, we define what is work. In 10 years, you can I can tell you surgeons are going to probably be Surgery will be done by technology. Today, I was reading an article whereby all these billionaires are investing into the future of human droid. It was today, Elon Musk was giving us a view of, is, is called Optimus Prime, the human droid that was taking a walk around the factory. The human droid could fold clothes, could kill an egg without breaking it, could knit, could do almost everything a human can do. So now that begs me that what event that will make humans unique in the next five to 10 years? And to me, it will come down to the soft skills. Sometimes people will just want to collaborate because they just want to hear another human's voice. What we all, what you're doing right now, what they do on Twitter space, where people just come together and people are just talking and sharing knowledge, it's going to become, well, it's, it's already full-time work for some people, but those are the things that are going to become what our new work is going to be. Forget factory work. Factory work is automated. Forget driving. In 80% of the world, in 10 years, there will be no drivers. You will have what autonomous driverless cars, it's already almost here. That will work in almost 80% of the world in 10 years. So if all of those things get changed, the next thing there is now, how do we transition into it? So if I'm looking at the future of 
remote working in 10 to five to 10 years, it, it's not going to be remote work anymore. It's going to be the future of work we're talking about because the world is getting smaller and it's getting nuts because this is the space they have to get with you. The world is becoming a global village and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller every day. Why? Because information travels around faster than you can even switch. And once that is there, it's about now, how do you add value remotely? Remotely is saying there's an advantage over actual. But when the nature of work changes completely, that means that definition of I'm a remote work is not going to be a an advantage anymore. Whereby, because what we need to actually export is actually global because everybody's playing on the same nomad environment. Regardless of who you are, what you do, technology is there to do it for you. So to me, what I would say before actually opening or breaking any tables at this early stage is to say the future of working in, in of remote work in the next five to ten years will not be the future of remote work. It's going to be the future of work. Now, everybody is working remotely right now. What is it you do now that cannot be replaced by technology? If you don't have answer to that question, there's no future in remote work. Home. So let me bring in, um, let, let me hand over back to Mrs. T before I take all the time. Thank you very much. Wow. <clears throat> Please, I need to be seeing your light bulb moments in the chat room. I'm, I'm already seeing people clapping. You know, every time I listen to Mayowa, and I've been listening to him for over four years now, he's always light bulb moment. See, we'll be saying a lot of things here. And I'm sorry for your life. If you do not have community that matters, because I'll be peppering you people. If you don't have community that matters, that is the first future. <laughs> your, your, your future is still very far. <laughs> you need people. You, you need people to reorientate you. So start asking yourself, check number one, what are you doing right now that technology cannot replace? It's not Buari, it's not Tinubu, it's not Osibanjo, it's not Obasanjo, that is your problem. Start asking yourself that question. Now, UK, over to you. What do you think the future of remote work is in the next? Okay, thank you so much. Um, uh, first of all, I, I'm really, I was really intrigued by um, Mr. Mayowa's position. And I think it's something that we should take to heart very, very, very seriously. And... For me, what I think about it is, so when you look at the concept of remote work, right? It's simply speaking to less and less physical effort. But I don't think we saw it coming just like um, it was said already that things like AI and so on would come around, right? We just enjoy the idea of, oh, let's just sit back at home. We can do everything from here. And we thought that's where it was going to stop. But the less physical effort is going to require, even if somebody else or something else is doing that those physical efforts. So if they are saying, "Oh, hey, don't come to the factory again. Do what you can do from home," even if there's something taking the taking those things and doing those hard work that you are no longer you know going to be doing. So that means when I look at the future of remote working now, I'm thinking more like, how do you become a human that can ideate and design systems that can run? I think that is where power would lie a whole lot. How can you ideate and design systems that would run? Now, every organization has different components. There's the marketing unit, there's the business development unit, there's the uh, programming unit, there's all these different units. Those units are not going away, right? But those units would need to be, would need to have work done. That's not also going away. So whether the work is being done by AI, or some engines, there's somebody that is thinking, okay, this is a better way we can deliver this. And then we design a system that can be automated for it. So you must become a very a master of your space so much so, not so that you can do more, right? Physically, you can, oh, okay, if you were driving, you know, you want to become James Bond so you can have more driving gigs. No, that's not what you want to think or how you want to think, rather. It's, how do I master my space so much so that I can now begin to create ideas and design systems around them that would run? Because those are the people now that will be valuable to organizations because we could build a robot or we could build 
an automated system. But what would that automated system do? The robots can't just wake up and say, you know what, guys? Um, so this is the next step for me or this is the next step for me. I don't know what you think, but it's what I want to do. Somebody has to tell that thing what to do. Somebody has to still think around, think of systems, design systems that this um, technology would execute, right? Somebody still has to map, you know, um, create a, 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 a structure that um, would enable road mapping to be better such that driverless cars can function better without accidents. Right, so you must be able to understand your space well enough, not so you can do more. It's not about how much more you can do, but how much you can ideate, innovative ideas that you can then design systems around for automation to take place because automation is not going away. It's here to stay. So how then do you leverage that to create systems? That's where, um, you know, I think, would be you know a good a good foresight for for us to take advantage of yeah thank you okay wow 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 we, we're already almost moving into the second question and i hope we are already taking learning so as we say okay that one i'm bringing it home now that chat gpt is not going to replace you ai is not going to replace you but the person that knows how to use AI is definitely going to replace you. So you're thinking in your individual space that how do I bring in value so that I can do more with less? And that is where the world is going to. And I, I personally say this, it's part of the focus we have at Read, that this is the best time to be alive. Because this is the time when, and I hear you, Chidi Man, I understand that, you know, that's kind of like the prevailing mindset. But I challenge that mindset that is not true in this generation. Because this is the generation where, where the child of a nobody can become somebody with the power of social media, with the power of the internet. The question is, what are we doing with it now? You guys have already started all this big, big grammar and you will be deconstructing it for us. What are the skills? We have a lot of people on this call and they want to improve their earnings. I'm going to start with Maya and I'm going to end with UK. We've seen UK's um, profile and all of that is in Nigeria. He's cashing out in USD. Let me block his face. So that people will not come and start looking for him. But this, these are real things. These are things that are actually happening. And we, we can see, I'm putting the question to buy one. I'm loud in UK, but you guys will see why. He started the Go Nomad company at just 21 with no godfather. The only godfather he has is his brain. And I think all of us have brains. So we'll be looking at what can we do? How how can we? improve ourselves so that we become people of global value. We start attracting values. So we are starting with you, Maya. What are the skills you would advise for someone seeking to become globally relevant to get some um, remote jobs? I want to be in Adamawa. I want to be wherever. I want to be in Uganda, Syria alone. I don't necessarily want to leave my location now. But from where I am, I want to be able to end. I want to improve my lot. What are the skills and what are the things you would advise for the person to do? Thank you. Thank you. For, um, the first thing I'll tell everybody is, even if you still have a job you're doing, you have to take your personal development extremely serious at this point in time. And there's this thing that we always do, we older people, ah, that tech thing, no, I'm not into it, that is, for the young day is a lie. If you do that, those young boys will show you. So oh, let me get back to what we're saying. The first thing you need to do there is your technical competencies, you have to go and brush them up. And when they say brush them up, you have to completely. The only thing that will give you advantage to be able to get a, a, um, a, a remote role is your technical competencies. In terms of that, that's the first thing you need to do. What role do you need to do? See, there are so many things you, you need to do that has got nothing to do with what you studied in school. You can look into the first question there is, okay, let's look at the bigger picture. The world is not going to use less of technology because technology is, is going to be there. 
Now, number two, within the technology space, where can I place myself? Now, look at that space as a whole. And please, let us get out of the thinking of, you know, duplicating what we see one person do. And if one person is influencer. Everybody starts becoming influencer. One, well, everybody now has had what Mr. UK is doing. Now, everybody too will now want to start. There's nothing wrong in learning from that, but it's your ability to take a step back and think in terms of that. And the first thing you will need there is you will need the basic technical skills required. Now, number two, take that to the next level. What are the things that's going to be so prevalent? Number one, see, cybersecurity is so important that people with the cybersecurity skills, anything cloud-related, all of those spaces, it takes you six months to be an expert in that role, I can tell you that. I know a couple of colleagues who run things like that, and in six months, now think about it, just dedicate six months to sort the rest of your life. It is a good price to pay. You spend four, five, six years in university. What have you done with that? Well, to speak to myself as well, I studied architecture. I, I don't know the last time I held a pencil to, to draw. So it is about you understanding the required, what is going to be the task in the scene. When it comes to AI, there's so many fields that you can become an AI consultant. You can become a cryptographer. You can, there is, it's all about you thinking about, okay, what are the fields in the technical area that would allow people to be able to work remotely? At least still AI completely goes to the next gear because I was reading an article today whereby um, Tyra Pell, oh, is it, is it Tyra Perry? I can't remember his name. He had a dream to actually expand his studio. And the article was saying the moment Sora came out, the man said, please put a pause on that project. All these things I'm looking to build millions of dollars. The guy could sit down somewhere and type pan, 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 and the scenario is created. All of a sudden, you can see how technology now, it is some people that will now begin to leverage what Sora has done. Sora has done it in a centralized environment. There is, you will start seeing different variants of Sora now, just like we have different variants of ChatGPT. We have Gemini, we have Grok, we have different ones. And see, there are more companies in the world than the current AI infrastructure can support. So it's about you looking for a particular niche and saying, you know what? People are still not talking about in terms of what is it when you become a blockchain consultant to an organization? They are studying that in the university right now. I mean, in institutions of both of education. It's about you thinking about what is it you need for the technical equipment. Equip yourself technically within six months. Most of the roles required, you can get satisfied enough for you to be able to be getting your gigs, for you to be able to actually get on what's it called, um, on new work, on uh, Fiverr, and on all these places to start bringing in your own, on Mr. OK's um, platform and all of that. So is, if it's going to be to a graphic design, what are the skills you need for you to be a graphics designer that see? There are so many tools out there that can do it. There is one called mid-journey. That mid-journey is amazing. But what Midjourney is trying to do is what Sora has done better. And these so things like this will continue to happen. So it's about you picking a particular area within the tech sector. And please, you still need your, your fundamentals of Microsoft Office and, Mac, uh, and Google Suites. Organizations are still using them as much as the Azure and all of these things are coming. They're still the basic things required. Get them, be very, very competent on them. Now go for certification in the areas, cybersecurity, computer, um, what was it called, um, AI learning, LMM, in, in, what was it called, cloud com computing. There are so many coaches out there that would be able to teach you in terms of what are the skills required. Those are the hard skills. Now the soft skills, your ability to offer solution to people's problem. See, I'm a finance coach. I'm an author. I have enough on my plate. Every other thing I do, I have some people that I just tell them what the problem is. How they solve it, I don't want to know. You will always, there will always be a role for people who can profess solution. We are not telling you to be the solution. We are telling you to be the plug in between their problem and the solution. And do you know how much deal make people who actually bring deals to the table, who bring solutions to the table, get paid? In some sector, they call them the finders fees, they call them different things. They are paid handsomely. 
there is a particular so there, um there is um I, I wouldn't go too technical on this, but there was there is a group of a, a group of guy on Twitter I've been following, and they just they did a, a, a what's it called a profit sharing solution for a particular platform, and I believe somebody took that solution and went to a bigger competitor, and now gave them that same solution and say, if you can actually roll this out within your community, the shares of that particular tech you went up almost 4 billion. Really swap. It was somebody who saw a problem you were solving in a different community, a problem, and took it to them and said, you can do this. And when they took it there, the fine works, you get your cut. Please be a solution provider. And it's your ability to have the critical thinking ability. The, the mind that creates a problem is not the same mind that will provide a solution. And for you to be able to do that, that means your ability to, to this does not, it's, it's not a skill that you, you gain by, uh, I'm just going to sit down there, I'm going to be scrolling on, on stuff. No, it doesn't. There are critical thinking process can go on. It's your ability to be well exposed. Your ability to know what is out there. It's being able to be that plug in. And the third one is the soft people skills. Please build integrity and trust. Some people are cashing in on integrity and trust to the point whereby they don't have to do anything for the rest of their lives. No, what do you think, um, trans that lady that goes everywhere with Oprah? What do you think she does? I, I can't know, I don't know her name, but you have seen her. Anyway, you see her cry, you see her. What do you think she does? Do you think she would ever lack money the rest of her life? But you can see she's proven herself to be somebody that can be trusted. See, wealthy people are looking for people that can be trusted. See, trust enough is something that can feed you for the rest of your life. If I know you're somebody that can be trusted, I have an idea in my heart and I share it with you. And I know you're not sharing those ideas with my competitors, regardless of how much they're offering you. There are fewer and fewer of those people left alive. That's why you see some people, every road they go, it's either a particular thing they take with them everywhere they go. It's even a particular one person they take with them where they go. So when you see them, you see that person there. They were they were you know, interviewing the Liverpool manager and his deputy. I, I was watching his interview, and he said he got offered to coach a particular club uh, last season. He said, "But I'm not going anywhere because why? Because um, the manager knows he can trust me that I'm going to stay with him till he finishes this project." How many people can say when it comes to you they trust you hundred percent to whatever that has been dedicated to you? Hey, all this money is good is good to do, but I know people who all they have is the integrity and trust that is cashing their money day in and day out. Because the the higher you go, the fewer people you can trust in your circle. Everybody needs somebody they can trust. So those are the big tricky areas I would employ you to look into. See so that one machine is not going to replace it. Your ability to have that human interaction where people will need to speak to somebody, where I'll need to pick up a phone and I just say, I just want to talk to someone. See, people like the billionaires in the world, there are people that can check you because one thing they say, they get into the news, is the fact that they do have issues, but they share those issues with the people they trust, people we don't know about. Presidents are people they trust in their inner circle. You don't know them. They are not these uh, special, special things you're hearing about. Everybody has somebody. Mr. OK, you have somebody that you tell the deepest things about you, the ideas you ideated. And you know that person, you trust them so much, you know, they're not going to go, go and set up a business or from the idea they've taken from you. So it's being able to look at those three key areas and building on it. Thank you very much, man. I feel as if I've gone through a master class just now. <laughs> But you can let's have your perspective. What are the skills you would advise? Okay. For someone seeking um, so for for me, what I advise um is first of all, look at every organization 
in three forms, right? So every organization wants to build, they want to distribute, and they want to manage. So they're looking to create new things. So they're looking, that's what I mean by build. They're looking to create new things, right? New products, new services, right? They're looking to distribute. They're looking to sell, put those things that they're creating in the hands of other of actual customers, actual users, right? And they're looking to manage the operations of you know, the organization better. So which means they are looking for data capabilities and they're looking for um, a way to make informed decisions or better decisions using data, right? So when you look at those three areas, um, a very good example is cloud computing, you know, which Mr. Mayo already mentioned, which falls under um, building stuff, right? So cloud computing and engineering um, for the next few years is a very valuable area to explore, right? Cloud computing system design is a very valuable area to explore. Then in terms of distribution, you, you could check out a new concept called AI employees, right? Knowing how to create and um, help organizations deploy AI employees. So uh, Mr. Mayawa mentioned um, Tyler Perry's story where he's putting a halt on an $800 million uh, studio expansion after he saw Sora AI, you know, which is developed by OpenAI. Sora AI is, 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 uh, is an AI that can produce video scenes that you can possibly imagine. So you just give it a prompt, just like chat GPT, right? You give it a prompt and it could produce an actual video scene, video, actual video form, not, and you can watch it, right? So if one of the biggest filmmakers, right, is putting a hold on, on a multi, you know, nine figure studio expansion, just so he can explore the ability or the potential that there's, there's somebody, there's something that could produce scenes for me automated and all I have to do is just give it the right prompt, then I think it's worth exploring. So right now, um, um, cost, uh, organizations would be looking for less and less uh, customer support agents, right? So an, an AI support employee is something that can be built and deployed. I'm sure that if you interact with um, several forward-thinking brands today, you would find that whenever you reach out to them for help, the first thing that is trying to help you is not a human being, is a bot. And then when all, all hell breaks loose and you're like, listen, I need to speak to a human being. <laughs> and then they'll now say, oh yeah, no vex. Here's somebody you can speak to, right? If they can't solve your problem. But they are already trying to solve your problem. And to a large degree, a lot of them are already solving your problem. So there'll be more advancement in that field. So right now it's being used by a lot of top organizations, but it would spread to the point where the average SME is now thinking, oh my God, um, is there really a point in hiring somebody to sit down here all day and manage all of these inquiries? Can we not just deploy something that understands my business well enough and can, and can fix that? Um, look out for this company, um, Wano. Um, Wano. Wano is building um, tools that can help you create AI employees and deploy them for organizations. So you can create AI employees in customer service, sales, marketing departments, you know, in different departments of the business where um, you can help a company build or compute their knowledge base, upload it, and, and it creates an AI employee that you can then deploy on their websites and other um, platforms. So that's, that's, an, that's an example of something you could um, look into. Then also um, there's, there's business analysis, right? So I talked about manage, right? So it's analysis and uh, analytics. Data is, I mean, with, with all of the sophistication of today's world, you can already imagine that there's a ton of data out there now every single day that is being you know, passed. As we are here right now, Zoom is collecting a ridiculous amount of data, right? Not just from this session, but from the millions of other such simu sessions holding simultaneously on their platform, right? And you know what would they do with that data? I don't know, they will figure that out, but there's somebody that has to figure out what do we do with the data that we are collecting, right? And so being able to be skilled in, um, tr understanding and translating data for 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 a bit for an organization is very very key as well. So yeah, those are three areas that I would say you should take a look at. That will be very valuable. Okay, amazing, amazing, amazing. Like my head is spinning, and I'm seeing that the house is getting quiet because I'm sure everybody is asking the same questions. My wife said something very profound. There's this bad wagon effect. Oh. It is event planning that people are doing. Oh, 
people are making money from event planning. They are selling Zobo. They're, you know, very basic, mundane things that is not moving us forward. And this is going to be very, no, we need to tell ourselves the truth. We need to tell ourselves the truth. That's why we're shouting all those very funny things that we're shouting up and down. What we expect, last month, we were talking about building a plan, doing goals. So in your goals now, I hope you're already writing down what are the skills that you need to get in the next six to nine months. There are some exams that you have to rewrite. You might not write it the first time. What are the investments that you are going to put in yourself that will make you globally relevant? I'm not saying don't sell your kono. I'm not saying, and honestly, let me even say it. If you are doing what I consider as very elementary task, you need to start thinking on how you would upskill yourself so that you do not become a dinosaur in the next two, three years. Because the truth is, if you stay with the way you are doing business now, you are going to cry more about the good old days in the next three, four years. Because one whisk kid is going to come out of the university and is going to digitalize that kono that you are selling. Confusion will catch you. Let me even make it very basic. Like um, UK was speaking about bots and all of that. For people that bought sounding far-fetched, when you chat somebody on WhatsApp and you see, hello, I'm so, 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 and so, I will get back to you. What do you think that is? It's closer to Ross than we think it is. And as Mayawa said earlier, you need to force this abuse. The first fight is in your mind. You need to force this abuse your mind that, you know, those nonsense that they teach us. You are not a science student. You are an art student. The brilliant people, are, all those things is nonsense. In this age, it is pure nonsense. I tell my daughter, God is not angry with you. Carry the book, sit down, read it. Nobody has two heads. Read it until you understand it. If you read it consistently, one day the book is going to open up to you. If there's nothing complicated about it. It just follows a pattern. The only thing is, there are some patterns that are more difficult to pick than the other. Once you pick it, when they tell you that Thomas Edison failed 1,000 times before he got light bulb, it's because light bulb is not making ogi. So he had to be at it persistently. If you sit with anything with that persistence, it's going to open up to you. Thank you so very much. I'm sure people are getting um, serious value. Let me move, let me jump to my people. So I would um, go around. Then we'll not come back to, because I see that the house is getting quiet. <laughs> why why that book warm? He has broken it down for you. 10,000 hours of nitration. There is the biggest mumu in this world. If you spend 10,000 hours or something, there is no way it will not open up to you. So, Kika tell us, and I, I find this very fascinating. One of the things I equally see people do, and that's one thing I'm trying to disabuse our mind of in this session, is we are more reactive than proactive. So everything is catching us by surprise. Every single thing in this life is catching us by surprise. From three, four years ago, when we're starting read, we're talking to people about earning in USD. We're talking to people about how you can sit in Nigeria. It never happened in our father's time. And you are having shares in the US. You can buy shares, you know, anywhere in the world. And for some people, the thing was sounding like drama. So for the people that listened, they are cashing out in USD right now because they listened. You know, I was watching Financial Jennifer. We've had Financial Jennifer here. And Financial was like, oh, if you look at, if I look at my investments in Naira, I go like this. If I look at my investment in dollars, I start dancing. Because you have both options. You just chose either not to do it or not to seek the right information. And when we were starting with three, four years ago, this remote work thing was not as popular as this. But I did a bit of research and I believed 
that this was the future. And I shared it with some of the people in our communities and we're having some of them here to actually speak with us. And one of the people, as she, she blew my mind, Kike Lomo. Kike was in Benue. For people that don't know Benue, Benue is like the end of the heart. As far as me, I'm concerned, like, you know, it is one Lungu inside Lungu. You know, the way they will say, oh, oh God, why am I born in Nigeria? If you are born in Nigeria, you are born in Abuja, you are born in Lagos, they can still say your case is different. You are in Nigeria, you are not in Benue. It's like, you're, <laughs> you're fortunate times too, if you look at the projection. And interestingly, Kika was the first person to get a remote job and start earning in USD in the in our community. And that's why we said, we will bring this out. These are real people, real stories. It's not a first. So Kika, tell us, how was your, how did you feel the first time you got your remote job, the first time the alert landed, you know, in Benue, because in Benue, the best job you can do is a teacher, and mm -hmm. they'll be paying you, maybe 40,000 naira of income. <laughs> All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me once again. Okay, before I talk about the alert, let's go. Let me take you on the little journey. So I used to work at some point, and then along the line, I lost my job. Nigeria happened. The company lost its contract, so we had they had to lay us off. So I was out of job for a while, and then I had my son. After that. A little while later, I had my daughter. Don't forget, I wasn't working. It was only my husband that was working at that point. And the pay wasn't that much. So at some point, I was feeling very dejected. And even to do fine girl self, I can't do fine girl. Fine girl without money. That one is not fine girl. And then, you know, at times you even want to pick calls. You won't want to do anything. Like three people relying on one person in Nigeria, but... It's not fair now. Then along the line, I I started hearing that, okay, you have data on your phone and you are broke. It's your fault. How do we do this thing? I called one of my friends and I was like, babe, how far? This remote thingy, let's try it out now. So we started applying for jobs. We didn't know what we're up to. We're just trying to rely on our previous skill set. And then later we got hired, I think after three months, there was nothing, everything was sorry, so sorry, so sorry. We got tired of everything and we're like, okay. I think we just both went to sleep and all that. Then gradually I was like, okay, I can still do something. I can still do something. And I started Googling what I can do with my skill set and all. And you know, the Bible says at times, what is that thing you have in your hand? Faith without work is vain. And, you know, you can pray for, from now till eternity. You cannot pray yourself out of poverty. You cannot pray yourself out of penury. You can just, of course, I was like, okay, God, I want something. I want to do something. And then I stumbled on being a virtual assistant. And it actually spoke to me. I'm like, ah, this is something I know I'll enjoy doing. This is something similar to what I've been doing before. That, okay, well, let me do this thing. It's and then I started watching videos, reading up on how to be a virtual assistant and all that. And okay, I can't say the rest is history. You know, when, when you are, everyone helps those who help themselves as the saying goes. And then quote just came to me that, will you work as my virtual assistant? I was like, I'm actually reading up on this. No problem. She was like, I'm not going to pay you. I said, no, Alana, like, let me just build up myself. Like, I'm also rusty that I need to build up myself. And the building was building. Like, I remember I when I wanted to do Zoom, she she, just, she would just tell you, okay, create a Zoom link. I have a meeting, da, 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 da. She will not tell you what to do or anything. You have to find a way. The first time I tried MailChimp, I remember I started around maybe 10 p.m. and I finished around 7 a.m. in the morning. I did not sleep. I'll send, I'll see that, ah, I made a mistake. Try again. I made a mistake. Try again. I made a mistake like, ah, Kika, you'll soon sleep. In one hour, you'll sleep. I'll do it again. I made a mistake. I'll start. And she doesn't want to know. I own is in the morning. Let me see it. Like, 
I don't care how you do it. I don't care. And then, you know, we started like that. We fought, we made up. And she just said, okay, somebody is in need of a virtual assistant. Are you ready? I was scared. I'm not going to lie. They're like, ah, Moshe. Like, I don't know. Like, she said, ah, you factor it out though. And all that. And, you know, I started and I was like, ah, this thing is not bad though. When I received my first salary, I danced as on so small, like, hey, hey, so this one is sweet and, you know, and then I can be like, okay, what does my husband man need? Let me even surprise you with, with a wristwatch. You've tried enough now, you know, and it was actually sweet. That's all I can say. <laughs> it is sweet being in Nigeria and earning foreign. And it is sweet when you start progressing, you know, and all that. Yes. So it is actually sweet. That is all I can say. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I, I absolutely love that story. And I hope, um, and it's not a story. It's it's actually real. So for people that have worked with me, you're hearing real time. I mean, I don't understand stories. If you tell stories, you can't work with me. Like, <laughs> you must produce results. <laughs> and it's the first time I'm hearing that she actually did not beat you. To submit, I think she never told me that part because she probably know I would not listen. <clears throat> Why? It is what it is. You you need to first build yourself, position yourself. So you've heard, Kike. This is one of the things that work for her, and these are real life principles. Maya was spoken about you getting the cybersecurity skills that while you're reading and you're checking, I tell you free of charge, go and look for communities, look for people that you can volunteer for. A lot of times you are looking for money. I recently authored a book, I'll soon put the book close to me. And I said, see, money is an elusive goddess. You woo it. You are running, when you run after money, it runs away from you. That's why when everything is transactional, how much will you pay me? UK, how much? No, if it is not this one, I'm not doing. Common sense is not telling you. And that's why they say common sense is not common. UK, let me come and learn under you. Even if you will not pay. I'm telling you, maybe Kika did um, volunteer for over six months before the first paid job came in. But by the time it came in, she already had experience. Because people would ask you, what can you do? Write it down. Volunteer. As you are learning, volunteer. Thank you, Kike, very much. Amazing story. Um, Dida, let's have your story. How did it feel like the first alert? It's not everybody that is trying, you know. If you are any 1,000 pounds, in this economy, or let me even say 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds, that is not plenty money in UK. I mean, you, you really can't live on 2,000 pounds in UK, but 2,000 pounds in Nigeria right now is 4 million naira. I don't care what naira to dollar is. If you are earning 4 million naira in Nigeria, you are still not doing badly, unless you don't know what to do with money. And for me, one of the opportunities I see, as Maya was said, the world has become smaller is that people will be outsourcing some of these jobs to developing countries because it is cheaper for them. It's just simple common sense. I will do that. Why do you think there are all those factories in China, Vietnam, where they are producing all those clothes and people? It's cheaper to produce there. You always go to where it's cheaper if you have the right skill set. So, Dida, let's hear your last story. Thank you. You're muted. You need to unmute. No. Hello, okay, everyone. Yes. Yeah, it, it's so fun listening to to care because uh, my story is a similar as hers. I used to work in a multi-national company, and you know, I I, I tell the senior that um, probably I don't those days I think I didn't have value for money. Like when you say value for money, like the money comes, everything is just fine, baby girl, doing everything, and um. I voluntarily chose to leave the job because I thought I knew my next step. 
definitely I did know my name. I ventured into things that I really enjoyed. And then unfortunately, COVID happened. But before COVID was the head men, Abuja and everything, you know, and I stopped what I was doing. In short, there was even no way I could do what I was doing. And then I kept on spending and then the money went away and all of that. Interestingly, I got contact in the UK, not even, I wasn't even any dollars, you know. I say any in, in pounds, but it was funny because I wasn't so sure if it, was, if it was something I can do. I wasn't so certain, you know. And um, a family friend came in, and the next thing he said, he said was like, "Come on, something has been. Why are you not looking for jobs?" And I'm like, "I am looking for." But I was scared to actually go for some interviews, you know. And I thought I had to like, you know, those serious preparations. Because what I wanted was high. So if I'm living in a company like MTN, then I should be um, verging for another company that is, you know, better than MTN or, you know, side MTN. But he kept on telling me, why don't you just do those interviews? Is it that you feel, you know, you learn from it and all of that? I mean, I didn't understand what that means. Now, one is, I have to, I have to go in and I have to make it, you know, at one start. I should get a job and that's it. And then still on it, interestingly, this opportunity now came in and it was like, okay, there's um there's an HR assessor somewhere. And can you do it? It was self-doubt, so self-limiting doubt, like, hey, do where UK, who would I be talking to? You mean I'm actually going to be assessing or you both? <laughs> How is that possible? You know, how am I going to do this? But well, you see, I was resilient because I knew like I really needed this money. And this time around, I understand what it means to actually have value for money, you know, going through ups and downs and everything. So I started, you know, it, was, it wasn't actually an easy process. I had to unlearn, to start learning. And then just people that, were, that I was actually accepted, it was so interesting. Because they were they were little children. Ah, you just said that. I would just say that and say, uh, they've learned K plus plus, they've learned this one, they've learned. Ah, I started checking, like, oh boy, which world am I? Are you kidding me? You know, yes, I had a platform to, um, to assess them with, and it was remarkable. So that's how, you know, I started building my skills, owning it. Ah, I'll start typing. I'll be like, ah, ah, is this you? Are you the one doing all of this? You know? And it's so, it makes the world so, so small that I'm actually sitting in my comfort zone, I'll say, and I'm interacting with the whole world. That was exactly what I was doing. I was interacting, I am still interacting with the whole world, you know? And that was amazing. So, oh God, when the first alert came in, it was I was just like, I have never... I mean, plus my 13th month, and me working from January to December, to the 13th month, I, I, I've never seen that kind of money. And I was just like, God, if this is how I can earn, then why don't you sit down with us? So I started owning my skills, you know, at least I can tell you for, for free and for certain, and, you know, getting confident and where I actually work right now, if I don't, um, if they're looking for, if they need two assessors, I'll definitely be one of them. If they need just one, I am certain I'll be the one to be chosen. You know, so it's um, it's crazy. People think there are things that we can't do. You know, but all all you need is resilience. And then you, you become excellent in what you do, you know, and then you learn and you keep learning. Because I, I agree with um, Ogamayowa, personal development is, is something else. And I won't lie to you because I've now grown personally and professionally that come on now. Which company in this, which company in this world can I, because right now I know what you want. I know what you expect of me, 
depends. I know how I'm actually going to tailor my questions, my answers to what you're asking for. But right now, it's still another eye opener because I was I was listening to Ogamai Owa in my head. I was like, ah, hey, so, <laughs> I can have all of this up to the voice. I still need to be innovative. Okay, I think we lost her. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. So she's going to catch up with us. We had the fear part. I tell people, do it afraid. Everybody's afraid though. But when execution is when you conquer that fear. And as you conquer the fear, you start getting more confidence. Nobody can conquer the fear for you. But me, in two minutes, I'm looking at the time. In two minutes, let's hear your experience. <laughs> okay. So good evening, everyone, again. It's been so interesting listening to Kike and Dida. You know, um, so I think we all have our stories coming from different backgrounds. So I, my own story wasn't that I lost the job. My own story was that I relocated from where I was living. So I was in Abuja and I relocated to Lagos. And, you know, it was, I relocated during the COVID season. And at the point of relocation, there was no option of looking for a job because my first remote work was actually, I didn't even have an understanding of what, a, what remote work was as at the point, but you know, I would say communities have helped me. When um, coach will say money is in people, money is in people, not just, you know, not just the money you are chasing, but actually the communities you surround yourself with. I would say I'm a product of community on this, on this job or when we're talking about remote work because, you know, after searching for a job for a long time, you know, I was doing my own thing. I was trying to start up my own, you know, organization. I realized that, see, starting up is not mouth. You have, you need resources. Honestly, you can ask the people who have the organizations here. You need resources to do the job. And I think one thing that is really important, even as we venture into this room, remote work discussion, is the fact that we can have open minds. Because that's one thing I would say the rich community did for me, opening up my mind to see what I had in my hands. You know, I had worked for people in different capacities, volunteered in different capacities. And I was working remotely without really understanding that I had the ability to do remote work for people in the comfort of my space without moving. I was looking for a job that would take me out. And if you live in Lagos, you will understand how Lagos is that you can leave your house at 5 a.m. and you won't be back in your house till 10 p.m. in the night or 10, you are still on the road. And you know, it was one of the things I had to deal with when I got here that do I really want this? I have a family, I have young children, you know, and like Ike said, you can be praying from now to tomorrow. If you don't take action, nothing will happen, you know. And being in this community, being in a read community, opened my mind that I can do for that. So I started volunteering with read. So when we say wherever you find yourself, volunteer, give your service, serve like they are paying you for the job. That's one thing I've seen Kike do here in read. And, you know, I served, I started serving. I was writing newsletters in read. I didn't know that. One of the current job I am doing, I'm actually writing newsletter. And I was just in with Kike, I was like, if they told me that I can produce this number of newsletter in a week, I would say it's not possible. Do you understand? But I've had to grow myself. I've had to learn, you know, getting the first job was like, ah, so it's really possible. Honestly, volunteer, serve with your heart because people are watching. You know, I one of the people I was referred to, I had to ask the person that referred me that, why are you referring the same person you've referred to somebody else? Why are you referring the same person again? And she said, because I know she can do the job. Sometimes you don't know people are watching you in the space where you are working, but people are really watching. And I was really amazed. It was exciting to know that I can sit down in my room, sit down in my house and be working and have time with my children and be able to do the things that are important to me and have that flexibility and still earn, like earn good money while at it. And not just earn from one source. That's one thing remote work, I think remote work draws for us. It gives you that flexibility to end from different sources while creating value. So for me, it's exciting. I'm learning a lot. The exposure it has given me in just, let me say actively in the last two months, the exposure I've received, the um, soft skills I have learned, the 
tech skills I've had to learn. <laughs> As in, it's surprising because there are things, there are apps that I need to use that I've not used before. And it has given me the ability to learn quickly. So I've had to learn quickly. Oh yeah, what, like Kika said, you will do research. You will go and find out how do I make this thing work? I've had to do that. There are nights I will be on a call sometimes with Kike and I'll be like, Kike, oh yeah, I need to do this. How do you, she will send me YouTube links. I've had to learn and I've had to unlearn, but it has been a beautiful journey. And it's one I'm recommending to everyone. You can do this. You can do it and do it well. Okay. Let me stop here because of time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Amazing. So Bumi is adding another thing to it. And I absolutely agree with her. The power of community. And I can see Bino do asking for volunteers. So I trust that somebody is cashing in on that because this one is, is soap. I'm telling you. Ah, this is Yoruba. How will I translate it? Please permit me. I know this is a global um, platform, but permit me to give this adage and I'll try to translate it. My people have an adage that I repel on Jomwe Jomwe. So what that means is that you see the reason why they can able to they, they can kill snakes easily is because snakes walk singly. Like you, we only see maybe cobra, one cobra going. You see maybe one python going. You see one king cobra going. So it is easy for a community to just come. Three, four people will carry stick and hit it and say they are killing the snake. But if to say the snakes understand the power of community, why do you think people don't attack lions anyhow? They move in pride. They move in community. When you do not have a community, you are going to suffer. And when you are in a community, bank benchers, you are not visible. Nobody knows you. Nobody knows what you can do. You are not top of mind for anybody. Nobody knows your skills. Nobody knows. So even if they are asking, nobody would be able to say anything. So what advice I'm going to give you in this 2024? Join communities. Mm -hmm. You are doing cyber security. We are doing this. You are doing that. Go and find communities. It would help you. And in that community, be visible so that you can attract sponsors. Sponsors are people that refer you. Now, I'm looking at the time. This time is flying. No, I think I only have like 15 or 20 minutes more. God help me. Now, this is going to UK first. Then we might have my watch in something. And I'm being very practical here. Personally, I've observed that it is easier to get remote work in developed countries than in underdeveloped countries. So we've had, we've seen the Japa trend and all of that. A number of people I know, when they first get there, it's remote job they are doing. But they are not, they don't seem to be able to attract those remote jobs in Nigeria or in African countries. What do you think is responsible for that? How do you think we can mitigate against that? And what do you think is the future of remote work in Nigeria and Africa. I'm intentionally putting it to you because I saw you do, and I said, Kai, this UK. Mawa, UK did an advert for his company. He said 100% remote. I had to chat him. In Nigeria, you are saying, he said, yes, yeah, so that's 100% remote. So please help us. How do you think we can attract okay. international remote jobs? And what do you think is the future for remote jobs in Nigeria? Thank you. Thank you so much for the question. Um, so yes, yeah, this is, I mean, we already have life, you know, several life tes testimonials in the house. So, you know, we know, you know, you know very well that what we're talking about here today is very practical, right? Um, when it comes to the kinds of jobs that are available and the distribution as well, um, you must keep in mind that um say for instance, you were actually resident in maybe the UK, you know, which which has been mentioned here a couple of times, the UK or the US, right? Um, you would not necessarily be, would I say, applying or, or looking for remote jobs now. They just have jobs, you know, that have the ability for you to do them remotely, right? So, but once you are out of that location and trying to get a access to jobs from that location, um, then you are only going to be looking out for jobs that are specifically designed or specifically created 
to be offered remotely to those regions. Now, when companies are making their plans and saying, okay, what's our hiring plan like for the year? They, especially um, remote companies abroad, they do, they have a planning system, right? That assigns a certain percentage of these jobs, right? To several locations, okay? So the chances that you will be able to get the same kind of um, remote package that somebody actually living in the UK or the US would get from Nigeria is a little slim, right? Um, if not, then they too would just be moving out of the UK and the US to go live in Nigeria and do the jobs, right? So um, um, this is not to say that there are no jobs that you can take advantage of or that you can apply or get. No, you just have to know that um, what's being offered um, to regions like Nigeria, India, and Co are all planned. They, they, they are not offering this job by mistake or happenstance, right? Everything is strategic, okay? So, and you can go look online. There are several data sources where you can go look online to see what and what is currently being offered, right? In, in fact, specifics, you can see down to specifics, what's being offered, you can filter by location, what's being offered, what's being available. So in this part of the world, we would keep having access to these opportunities, right? Um, especially as people who are not living in those places, you keep having access to it, right? That's not going away, but you have to know exactly the kinds that are being made available, right? So very few people are able to get the same remote working package, for instance, that a resident abroad will be able to get. So that's not what, so for instance, a typical entry level remote work uh, job or opportunity in the US might be around um, th uh, $3,000 to $4,000 monthly upwards, right? But if they are creating a similar package um, that can be offered to talents in African regions, Southeast East Asian regions, then they would most likely create, you see that the minimums are like $1,000 upwards, right? So that's to show you that as much as it is possible to have access to these things, the packages that are being created are different, but they are still valuable in their own right, and they give you a stepping stone. Here's another thing that you even have to do. Many of these jobs, too, also have this uh, feature where um, you can start doing the role um, remotely from wherever you are, let's say Nigeria, and then you could actually um, relocate if you wanted to, right, to actually go work there physically, still remotely, but you are now resident in those countries. And some of them have those sponsorship packages, right, that have relocation plans as well. So it's very dynamic, but you have to look out for, um, you have to be able to filter and look out for what's being offered in your region specifically. But the good news is, is that it's everywhere, right? So you cannot say, oh, it's because I'm in Nigeria that they're rejecting me. No, they actually are opportunities that are available to people in different locations. And the reason for this is because there's a very high rate of adoption. There's a very high adoption rate for remote work abroad. So that's why they're able to create a ton of opportunity that even you can access from wherever you are. It's why, it's why I mean, you know, um, uh, in, in my company, we are able to service customers from anywhere in the world. We have customers in six different countries plus, right? And we're able to service them without having to be anywhere physically, right? Because technology exists, right? So in some regions where, and we have talent that we pay remotely in different, in different regions as well, right? Of course, everything is going to be, um, like I said, there are packages created for different regions. So you just have to be able to have, to know how to search, know how to filter, and know how to, you know, get these opportunities, but they are available. That is for sure. Okay, good examples have already been mentioned in the room today. I mean, imagine doing um, um, landing a $2,000 per month gig, $1,500 per month gig. That is below their minimum wage, right? But it's a whole lot over here. Okay, and it's able to take care of uh, whatever thing, you know, you need to take care of. And then from there, you can keep upskilling and upskilling as well, right? So, yeah, um, I, think, I hope that um, provides some context and answers the question. Okay. Amazing. Thank you so much. One of the things I heard you 
talk about is do research. <clears throat> and I'm very strong on research. My wife spoken about personal development. So there are some of you, if you say you want to do this remote job thing, you need to, how, how many hours a day do you devote to remote job? My was um, said 10,000 hours. Anything you focus on for 10,000 hours, you're able to become a master in it. How many hours is in a year? Can somebody quickly help me check that up on Google something? How many hours do we have in a year? So that we can put context to these things because we do some of these things and we don't um, internalize it to be able to actually make it practical to us. So if you have to do 10, 10,000 is equivalent to 10 years of two hours a day's focus. So you are asking yourself, what do you want to do? This thing that you want, how well do you want it? How many hours before now? Just, just tweak your lifestyle a bit. How many hours before now are you spending on X, on Instagram, lamenting about the government, lamenting about what is not working, and now change that time, that data you're using, and put it into productive use. Start checking which community do I need to join? Which job am I going to apply for? I try to make it simple and easy for people. Even start with one hour, 30 minutes every day, and focus on this. And by December, come back and tell me, you've heard Kike's story, you've heard Bumi's story, if your life will still be in the same place. But consistency is the name of the game. So, um, Maiwa, quickly, I don't know if you have anything to add to it. The question is, we observe that it is easier to get remote. And to even, sorry, before I go to Maiwa, <clears throat> to put context to this, how much is minimum wage in Nigeria? Government, minimum wage. How much is it? Nobody knows 30. <clears throat> so I'm saying 30,000. If you get a gig that is paying you $100, for instance, that's about 150,000. So you're already doing times five above the minimum wage as it is now. I'm putting things into perception and um, correct perspective for you. Then you now start taking out of that money. You are writing your certifications. You are doing your personal development. You are working on doubling, tripling that your $100 because the more valuable you are, the more value you attract. So you can tell yourself, okay, worst case scenario, I start with $100. But by December, I want to have gone to $500. What do I need to do to attract $500 by December? You might not necessarily meet it in December, but I can assure you that by end of 2025, you will not be saying the same story. Set those targets. Be very clear about it. Start making, having conversations that matter. Like this kind of conversations that we are having now, you are saying the kind of value you are getting. Stop sitting down with people that will be telling you things that doesn't make sense, things that are not true things without data. I don't even know where this country is going to now. Everything is just, all those things, it will not help you. It won't, it won't take you far. So Maya, please tell us in um two, three minutes, I'm looking at our time. I want us to be able to end this conversation by seven o'clock. So help us God. How can we make ourselves more attractive? How do we get more remote jobs from on the developed countries, if you don't necessarily want to relocate yet. Thank you very much. I think everybody's actually touched on it. And Mr. Uke has actually talked about it. But I think to me, see, one thing you need to consider there is what is called, we call them low hanging fruits. See, while you are actually developing your skills, volunteer in places where your skills can be identified volunteers in communities where I remember, I know that the people that are within my team is actually been through people that's coming into my team. And I'm going to tell you 
There is as much as it's good to go on those platforms. It happens everywhere in the world. Everybody first, they, they employ who they know. And that's, I'm telling you, regardless of it, the people say it's in UK and you know, it's a lie, it's the same thing. Some people are head on ten, and some people, once the role comes out, they just put in those things out there for formality sake so that HR will not come for them. Like the same as Mrs. Dida, HR specialist is there, you know, so that HR will not come for them. Why? Most of the times, people will tap somebody and say, okay, I need a virtual assistant, please. I need somebody you know. What if, why do you think they ask you for reference? Reference is just for somebody to say, yeah, they know you. And that is what it means. See, volunteer, when you volunteer, there are things it does. Number one, it gives you exposure. Number two, it gives you inside knowledge. Number three, it gives you something you can put on your CV so that when you have that CV together on LinkedIn and somebody checks you out, they can see, actually, you're working for somebody whose company is registered or, you know, in the, it doesn't matter where, where you live, it's who, who you're working with. So to me, I think that's the most important thing. Mr. OK is here by now. I expect everybody to have flooded and say, don't worry. See, don't worry about pay. Just let me pay. We focus too much on money. We focus too much on money and it's about if you don't pay me this. No, if when, you, when you're when you so valuable, whenever value is present, money is not a discussion. I will tell you that any time there is value, you don't discuss money. You didn't go into a Rolls Royce shop and start telling them, okay, would you take a hundred, 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 hundred naira left? But if you go to Toyota, you never should Toyota now. And that is what it is. It is because when you get, there are some speakers, people don't even ask them that, no, you know what their value is that you give to them when you go to speak to them. So you don't ask them when they take this, no. So while you're building yourself to that level, make yourself be accessible to people that you can develop from. Mrs. T is here. She's so connected. I don't, I don't think people maximize the communities they are in. She's so connected that the people she knows in the UK, for me to get to them, I will go through her. I'm serious. I, we, we, I'm telling you the truth. I know a particular gentleman in the UK that if I want to get to him, I have to go through two people. Instead, I go through her or I go through my mentor, one of the two routes. And both of us are here in the UK. So it is about you maximizing. When, when has any of you gone to and said, man, I'm looking to volunteer. Please, can you recommend me to anybody in your network? I just want to volunteer and learn. So you need to take, see, life is not this thing you are shouting that clinical, clinical. Life is not hard somewhere. It is the circle you are in that life is hard. I'm telling you, some people are not feeling this pinch one bit. Some people don't know the exchange rate and they are changing money every day. I'm not being arrogant. I'm telling you the fact of what I'm privy to. If your income, if your expenses are going to pay X, find a job that will give you 10X. You won't complain. That is it. You still have seven X to play around with. So please, as much as possible, don't despise the days of little beginnings. I will tell you that. And anything you find your hands doing, do it with all your heart. Those are the things that get your name being mentioned on the table when they say we need somebody. And trust me, see, the Bible says um, uh, the race is not to the swift, nor the strong to the swift. But something else said at the end of that verse, it said, but time and chance, that's what the most important to us, happens to them all. Every one of us, we will get the time, we will get the chance. The question there is, when the palace comes calling, Joseph, when the palace comes calling, are you prepared? Favor opens the door. You are basically in the, in the room. You are playing break through, break through, break through. Break through, you only break it. Once it has broken it, you're not too cool. Do you have the skills to withstand? My favorite book says something. He said, if the access door much strength is needed. All this your struggle is because your access door. He said, but with skills, success comes easy. One of the skills you need here is people skills. Connect. Connect. People. Now, Mrs. Kike said something now. Don't think anybody's reached out to us. Mrs. Kike, you have something. See, everybody you meet here has something you need. 
Let's not this African mentality whereby we're just looking like this and you're forgetting that, see, the gatekeeper is so powerful that the day you are meant to see that man, if they don't open, you are not going in. Some people, if it's their driver, that will whisper your name or we tell them, see, or that is always in a good mood between Friday 6 to 7 p.m. If you call him outside that you are in trouble. There are some modifiers that you need to be aware of. Most of us, our eyes on the king, the king you will never meet. But there's somebody that can position you where the man will drive and it will slow down like style. And the man will be, he said, we buy fruits at this place. You don't worry. Just go at that fruits place. The man will hear you. So please let us value the gift of men to people. Thank you very much, man. That's it on that topic. Wow. <clears throat> As in the chat room. <laughs> is just buzzing amazing amazing i know we've been speaking so much about volunteer please let me put a caveat here because people have this mentality that because it is free it is anyhow volunteering is you are not doing nonsense so in fact there are people that have come to try to volunteer and we tell them kika is here we say do one or two design i said kika i beg <laughs> we don't when before you can come and volunteer, what are you bringing to the table? So, I've had the privilege of volunteering for industry leaders, and I see half of people that are on their queue. I tell them, Ma, I'm very good at organizing, I'm very good at coordinating. They say, like, seriously, I say, yes. I have brought in ex board members. I have done with it. So when we when you say you are volunteering and you say you want to do this, what is your CV? It's not people you come and use as experiments. It will, so before you volunteer, you must have honed your skills. You must have something you are bringing to the table. God help us. Let me move to my panelists. Let me start with um V Brain. So V Brain. Tell us what has been your. We've been talking about remote work. People said that buzzing and is everybody just in USD right now? Everybody wants to volunteer. Everybody, ah, if I say, I do hundred dollars now. You hundred dollars is added to my income now. Ah, I know where that one goes solve. Oh. We know that it is not all sunshine and sunshine and sunshine. So tell us what's your biggest challenge as a remote worker and how did you mitigate against it? Okay, good evening, everyone. I believe I'm very audible. Okay, yes, you okay. are. So, okay, two, two things, right, I would mention. Firstly, it's um, being able to discern between who is real and who is not real. And um, it has been a very big challenge for me. And then secondly, uh, but I would tell you firsthand that um, graphic designers are very quick to be a scammer still. So it's very difficult to trust them. <laughs> I would say that for fact. So one thing that was a challenge for me was that um, getting clients and um, freel uh, my freelancers' um, clients to trust me at first um, business, like getting them to know that this is the real guy and then he could deliver your work for you. That was very a very big challenge for me because it is easy for a graphic designer to tell you or a web developer to tell you that um, your work could be with you on Monday and then it's Friday and he's telling you stories upon stories and all of those things. It's a big, it was a very big challenge for me. But um, when I do business with persons, the thing I put before everything, beyond the money you pay me, I don't discuss the money first. Before I discuss about how much you pay me, I'll first ask the questions. Um, when do you need your work done? Those are very specific questions I ask all the time. If I've done anything for you before, you know that I do that. When do you need your work delivered? You tell me, okay, I need it delivered on Tuesday, on Wednesday, and I'll tell you, okay, it's visible on Wednesday. But if it's not visible on Wednesday, I'll tell you, this is the time, this is the earliest time it is visible. And then you deliver at the earliest time you said it is visible. It is very important when you're doing work remotely. Being able to give your word and then deliver at your word. I don't know what's um, which other thing has helped me in um, working remotely more than that. It was very a very big challenge for me. And then um, overcoming it was like delivering on my work. If I tell you this is the time, 
And I know that very few times, uh, very, very few times, you may not be able to deliver on the words you've given. Um, it will be understood when you could actually communicate reasons, not just um, uh, mere excuses as to why you couldn't do um, the X, Y, and Z that you promised to do. So it is very, very important that, that as you work online, as you work remotely, as you work from the space of your home, you are able to say, I would deliver your work at this particular time and you're delivering at that time. Otherwise, you would not get any returning um, um, clients or customers. And like um, Coach said, uh, the work works based on referrals. You get referred. So I would not refer you if you couldn't deliver on your work. No one would do that. No one would. It's like give banking on their own personality um, for you or trading their personality for you instead. So delivering on your word is a very key aspect. People are um, easily get scammed on the internet. So they want to be sure that they are safe with you and that they could do business with you. That was one great challenge. And then that was how I was able to overcome it. Make sure you deliver to your word. Um, thank you. I believe I was able to say something to that. Okay. Thank you very much. Dida, I don't know if you have any things to say on that. What has been your biggest challenge as a remote worker mm -hmm. and how did you mitigate? Yeah, okay. yes, I did. Um, as a remote worker, you see, you understand like what I do is HR. So like I set almost every country in the world. So <laughs> Sometimes it's crazy trying to understand and to speak what, um, how an Asian country will speak, a candidate from an Asian country, then, you know, Europeans, you know, Latinos, you know. And again, at this job, even though I assess and all of that, I also have a quality assurance assessing what I do. So, you know, coming back to you to go like, uh, I don't know why you call this person this high, or I don't know why you call this person this low, you know. So you need to to get a compromise, get to understand how to do the work exactly. And the times are by um, the technical application view becomes different, you know. Of course, everybody's trying to like view, as you can always say, you know. You manage and then next thing like okay, probably you're working with like three applications and now you're giving you like five applications and then you need to get to uh, learn how to work with them. Not just that, but the efficiency also, the effectiveness and the efficiency also comes into what you do. So sometimes it could be overwhelming, but at the same time, you know, that you're resilient and ensuring like okay, you take this one after the other, you learn not even they just give you what to work with and they expect that you know you produce. So, uh, so what goes into this is for you to also learn, you know, you, you do all of your research and learn better so that at least when you're giving your, your productivity becomes better for you whenever you're submitting. So sometimes it's, it's crazy, you know. Uh, for me, for HR, this is amazing where I work because apart from that, you know. There's, there's a time constraint also when there's a huge backlog to collect, you know, so you kind of like you're sitting down on the system for like forever, you know, but at the same time, you manage your time. This is where it's interesting. You're working, but at the same time, you're learning a lot of things. So your time management comes in, your organizational skills comes in, you know, you know how to manage your lifestyle, you, you know, with your work. So that's where the challenges come from, but knowing how to maneuver all of it has actually made the work more interesting and you, I just gained confidence during the job. Well, amazing, thank you. One major take home for me from what you and Vibrin have said is discipline. And I know my wife said that while it was starting up, discipline, integrity, because people have to be able to trust you, even though they can't see you. So you have to be able to build that trust. And I like what you said about accents. I was in a meeting recently, and honestly, honestly, I thought I heard the man say Kilichi. So I was wondering, and I had to chat somebody in the meeting that, is it Kilichi? <laughs> this man is saying, where did you hear Kilichi? So we really need to build 
this competence in ourselves to be able to understand accents that is not Nigerian English. This is our Nigerian English is serious matter. Maybe you have to start making out time. I know someone that does that to watch foreign movies and actually listen to them so that you can be relevant in different climes. Two hours is already gone and I need to respect Saturday night. Yeah, amazing. My wife says get a linguistic coach. If we don't have money for linguistic coach, we're just starting. How do we help ourselves? We should go to YouTube. YouTube has select all things. Aha, I was waiting for that. Yes. Thank you. So the last question I want to ask you, Mayowa and UK is, we've spoken about er earning in foreign currencies, virtual assistant, and all of that. And this is actually the beginning of this conversation. We're still going to have other people on board next month too, because it's a very broad topic. And we, as a community, this is our contribution to the Nigerian economy. We believe that we can sit and we have real people here that have attested to that fact and they are enjoying it. It is not by begging people, please send me dollar. You can actually be a person of value and attract the dollar. So the question is, how do you handle foreign payments? So how do you pay people? How do people get paid? In fact, UK is, UK is still holding me. I tried to make one transaction to Syria alone this year that I was sweating and sweating and sweating. So how, how do you make your payments, Mayowa? Thank you very much, ma'am. Um, I'll handle that question in two ways. And I think the first one there is, see, as much as remote working is good and earning in dollars is good, up till now, and I know a lot of people, some people who work for me probably will, who work with me would actually watch this later. Um, we don't really, um, what do we say this? We don't negotiate our deals properly. There is a lot of focus on currency, but there is actually very few focus on money. What am I trying to say? See, if you're actually working for somebody and they're paying you in dollars, it's great. But have you ever put outside the box and find a different way to negotiate your payment structure? I'll give you one example. I'm in the, you know, as being a coach, I'm very, I, I'm very passionate about uh, technical disruption and all of this and um, blockchain and AI stuff. And not once has any of the people that have consulted for me ever negotiated part of their payments to be in digital currency. And the reason I'm saying that there is, if you work with somebody for a year, and you find a particular percentage of your of the money they're paying you in a year to actually be negotiating in a digital currency. I'm telling you, at this point in time, a year ago, you are making three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times ten the dollar value. See, dollar is good, dollar duplicates. That I will tell you without confidence. So it's about you being able to understand that. See, dollar is not the limit of how you can negotiate what you earn. Dollar is attractive because it's better than Naira. You need to get to a point whereby you now begin to think, how can I twist this thing up? I'm already thinking that, okay, if I'm working for somebody, I'll just tell them, okay, out of 100%, you know, 80% in dollars, can I have 10% in um, this particular digital currency and 10% in, um, in, in other things? See, Think outside the box. They, they might not think about it, but you going to them with that will begin to make them think about it. And there are technologies available to make that happen. Say, please, anybody who's consulting for me and bring this proposal is on the table. <laughs> but uh, it, it's one of the things which I'm telling us that we need to be able to do. You know, what stops you in saying, okay, 50% of my thing, I want it in Bitcoin, 50% in US dollars. See, let's stop thinking about just what we are going to eat today and forget. Dollar is depreciating. 
Okay, that's for a different a different site. So <laughs> oh, like the crypto evangelist has started. We will not live here today. <laughs> that's why I left it, you know. It's just because I was just like, Chai, there is opportunity for that. You're leaving money on the table. Let me put it that way. You're leaving money on the table. It's just like in the UK now, they made a mandatory that employers now must match your what you earn. If you if you save five percent in your pension, employer will match it. And so many people are not increasing that and maxing that out. They're just leaving it at a two percent because it's convenient for their paycheck to spend. But they are not thinking if they match it up at five percent, they are forcing the employer to put five percent of his money into that, and your future is being taken care of by somebody of making the ten percent. You know, but that's for a different conversation. So that's not why my sister has brought me here today. So, I was saying, how is it? Oh, the thing there is actually is up until two weeks ago, we've been able to leverage on uh, on fintechs and technology. Up until two weeks ago, most of the people that I, coll that I collaborate with, most of the people within my working team, we've been able to pay them through apps like Remitly and all of these and things like that. But just until I think last week or this week, I was trying to pay. I'm going to. Do you know that the, the person that teaches my children in the UK, the person is in Nigeria. Yeah, um, I'm, 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 yeah, that's true. And the person charges me in pounds. Though. So if you're thinking that you know math, I'm just sitting down there, you're not doing anything about it. Some people are staying in their well, home. I'm only for physics, so ah, yeah, I can teach their physics. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to pay the person, and funny enough, I'd introduced 12 people to that man. And no. I don't think the man is to do any other thing because he's, he's taking 12 kids. So and we we're trying to pay him this month, and we realized that readily because of the shortage of, of dollars available, there are really no other way currently now within this current space we are in right now. So uh, we have to pay him in Naira based on the black market rate on that day. So when I was sending it, I was telling him, I was like, ah, is one of us start teaching these children of 450,000 for school for less thing. How much are they paying price for oh, this thing on the university? You know, so how much do they pay this thing? <laughs> so we had to convert that, but before they would use apps like Remitly, and then I think um, one of the people I consult with actually uses um, this app called um, Revolut. There are so many apps you can use, you can use Wise. See, Mr. UK is not sending me to advertising more. But Mr. UK can register a business account for you. When you have a business account, you have a UK account and a dollar account. So I quickly checked him up now. And when he does that, <laughs> you will just give people, let your company sell it for them. Number one, you have a footprint in those countries. Number two, you're earning those currencies. Think outside the box. Yeah, the world is at even ground right now. So this is advantage needs to be on based on location. Right now, everybody's competing. You are thinking, those geniuses in India, they are, they are competing for the same role you are competing from. So if you've been able to now, you know, give yourself an additional thing, $400, get UK accounts, get this in accounts, and then you can now say, okay, send me an invoice. Let me see the invoices from the UK bank and I send it there. And you get your money, you cash down, you convert it and you spend it. So that is how I've been able to do it now. And to me, I think companies like Ripple, they've made, you know, cross-border payments so, so efficient right now. I think there's a few other apps as well in Nigeria that you can do USDT. You know, I'm just waiting for people I collaborate with to send me their, you know, their payment through those channels. I know those channels are there, but I'm not going to recommend to them how they want to get them. They are the ones to send me invoice pay. This is like, and if they don't come, I'll be converting it to exchange it on that before them and be sending it. So that's how I've been able to navigate that. Okay, thank you so much, um, Mayowa. Please, in the next five minutes, we'll be out of here. Mayowa starts shaking some tables next month's webinar as we said this is just part one and it's started into that you know all these spirit people they're just moving we're actually bringing in people that all they are doing in nigeria is what you call and that's among other things we've spoken about virtual assistants here you've heard somebody doing hr work from so really there is no limitation in this generation so there's this, they call it Digi Teacher now. We've brought in a corny lady here and from Nigeria, she's charging in dollars and she's teaching people Yoruba in the US. Cause you must just be able to look for opportunities. There are people that are out there and they want their children to be able to speak Yoruba. 
the woman is cashing out in dollars. She was here, I think, two Novembers ago. I'm using that to buttress what my OI is saying. So you've heard my OI now. His lesson teacher is in Nigeria. Is referred. Another thing about communities, about referrals, is referred him to 12 other people. Can people refer your work? Can they refer? If you do something, would they want to give you? Somebody said, tell us. Will they want to call somebody else? Or are you Nigerian mechanic? For me, those are the biggest headaches in this world. UK, quickly, how do you handle foreign payments? And we'll call it a day. Yeah, so I think very much like what Mr. Mario has already shared, I was going to say uh, be, be familiar and comfortable with all payment methods. You have no business fighting over the payment methods. You know, they have done nothing wrong to you for you to say, oh, me, I don't like this one, I don't like that one. You are trying to get paid here. All right. So get familiar with everything. Crypto, crypto is a very good one because it's a bridge, right? Get familiar with with um, with creating channels that can accept uh, foreign currencies as well. And one one great way to do it and simplify it for yourself in a long lasting manner is to turn yourself into a business. So see yourself mm. as an entity, right? See yourself as an entity. As you start to uh, get remote opportunities, see yourself as an, as an entity. Create an LLC, right? A company around yourself. It also helps you tax wise as well. Create an LLC around yourself, right? So whether you are whether you are creating um, thought pieces, whether you are um, virtual assisting, whether, whatever you're doing, you can create an entity for yourself that can give you the ability to access bank accounts globally, access payment methods globally that you can easily charge. You can charge people with their cards, their credit cards, their debit cards there. You can charge people with with um, with with wallets like Apple Pay, Google Pay, and co. Bank accounts, direct transfers, cryptocurrencies. It's vast. It's enormous, right? So get familiar with as many as possible because um, they just simply help you take payments, right? Um, yeah, and of course, um, GoNomad can help you when it comes to transforming yourself into an entity that can then access different. Um, financial tools for business. So those are pretty simple ways that you can get it done in today's world. And of course, it will keep evolving. So your job is just to get familiar and comfortable with it so that you don't lose out. And I think it was very brilliant what Mr. Mayawa mentioned about not just thinking about how you can eat today, right? So this, 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 these payment channels can help you also secure your future. So if you're doing proper allocation and you're saying, okay, this is my $1,000, all right, can I put $200 in, in BTC? Can I have $300 in USDT? Then I can have $500 in a Euro bond or whatever. Then you know that, okay, because I mean, for crying out loud, you're not trying to spend all of that money. You're not, the goal is not to spend everything that you earn, right? Your, your goal is to keep uh, making money, multiplying money, managing it properly, right? So you need to be able to leverage these payment methods, not just as a channel to receive, but also as a channel to grow and multiply, right? So of course, I'm, I'm sure that for the future sessions in the read community would help us um, do justice to that aspect. Uh, for today, it's just for us to be able to understand the payment method. So hope that helps. Thank okay, you. please drop your handle in the chat room. As Mayowa said, if you are not following UK in this money matter, me, I don't understand what you are doing. Sometimes what he's saying, I'm just like, okay, when you get to the end, I will understand it. <laughs> but yeah, he, he really understands this money and he enjoys to talk about it so you know there's there are people that they can't communicate with uk does he have that problem he will sit you down and he's explaining it so please follow him on it's just that he's a big man now uk you have people that are handling your handles now that would respond on time to ross <laughs> now the handle i don't have anybody <laughs> i'm trying you to can get on because my... Uh, to my, get you sometimes now. Through, eh? it's, it's not going through. I'm not wondering, wondering why. Okay, it's Kika, please drop me. UK's handle in there. Kika, yes, um, it's at UK EJNR. I don't know why mine is not sending. I might be able to send it to the chats. chats it's yeah. been an amazing evening. I dropped. My award is having. And honestly, if you are not following my award, Money Matter, this afternoon or this evening, he has already given me tip, like, and you know me, I'm very generous with information. When it comes to finances, this is one of my backbone, no. As he, ah, when he became my brother, I just went to sleep. I knew that I can never be poor in this world. I've come as a Christian. After that, how can I want to be my brother that will be broke? It's not possible. Please 
follow his handle. I've dropped the flyer. He's having a meeting tomorrow. And trust me now, I'll be there. My love at my wallet. The way we say there is no romance without finance. Financial ABC is going to break it down for you on his YouTube channel. Equally follow is, you know, I don't understand what some of us are following in this generation with all the information we have. We'll be following people that will be telling you things that is not even helping themselves, not to talk of helping you. There are channels you must be following. You are not on read. You are not following power to know. What are you following? Why will you not be crying when Naira to Dollar is moving up and down? Why will you not be surprised? I got a couple of calls last week. Last week was extremely busy for me because people looked at projections I made three, four years ago and they were dancing. Even me, myself, I looked at some things. I'm like, ah, life is good. So as my wife told you, it's not everybody that is crying. You no, know. It's your decisions that is making you cry. They have told you skills to learn now. They've told you what to do. He that has an here, let him hear. Please, as we round up, and thank you so much, can you drop key lessons that you've learned today in the chat room? Just one, two things that you're going to go away doing. Because it's not about hearing those things. It's not about listening. It's not about getting all emotional about it. It's what are you going to start doing? From now, 24th of February, what is that one thing that you're going to do? Kiki has equally dropped the registration link for Power to Know. Please click on it. You need, your life is moving in the trajectory of what to spend your time. Note that I said time first and your money on. For those of you that have been able to spend these two hours here, your mind has shifted. By the time you had tomorrow's own to it, you had next tomorrow, as in you're deliberate about it. In the next seven, eight months, the people around you will not recognize you anymore. So please, can I have like five, three, six responses in the chat room on what you learned and you're going to... I don't want to call names. Let me see. Yeah, Bumi A says she's going to volunteer. Yes, please stop being in the background. Nobody help you. Be more visible. <laughs> My wife says she's going to book a session with UK. Amazing. I love that. I love that. I love that. You people, uh, as in, when I met, the first time I met UK, and I wasn't kidding about it, and thank you, My wife. I, I tell him this thing. I, I hope he doesn't think I'm psyching him. I told him that, see, I know that there is hope for Nigeria. Like, we can't have brilliant people like this in Nigeria. And somebody will be telling me Nigeria is finished. Maybe it is the people you are talking to, all those people that say, wala, wala. That's why I think there is no hope in Nigeria. If you are speaking to people like UK, you know that, ah, uh, ah, uh, this country don't better. Like, I'm, I'm so positive about Africa. And that is what, not what this is exactly about. But I'm so positive about the future for Africa. You know why? Because number one, I believe in myself. You can see my brothers and sisters on this call. We believe in each other. And we know the seeds that we are sowing. I cannot be sowing purple and you will tell me that I will pluck pineapple. How now? It's not possible. So please change your community of people. Wow. Um, Emmanuel has a whole book here. He says, what I'm doing right now what am I doing right now that cannot be replaced by technology? Extremely important. How can you design systems that strong? Automation is here to stay. Take your personal development seriously. Christiana says, become a plug in between problems and solutions. Thank you so very much, everyone. As I said, next month is going to be an amazing session. Please, can we all unmute our mics and say a very big thank you to our panelists, the speakers, it's been amazing. Like, we are blessed to read. Thank Can we all meet Amek and say thank you? Thank you. Thank you, UK. Thank you, Amayowa, and every other person. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you all. So, thank you, read community.
the way we can really know that you people are saying this thank you well is let's cash out in dollars. Let's cash out in BTC. My wife said dollar is just the beginning. Look for currencies. I don't want to start my world currency now. The next five hours, we are not out of here. <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. And from me, it's good night and God bless. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.